Are you kidding me right now? You're blowing my mind. Arthur Morgan. Pete, Pete. Pete. I mean, what is happening? The dancing here? lady. Yeah. The da- what? Petunia. Yeah. Petunia. Oh, my God. It is episode 100. So we to celebrate with both of my co-hosts. Up first, we have Miss Sweetie, Danica Janelle. How are you doing, Miss Sweetie? Very well. Thank you. <laughs> Drinking actors. Drinking tears. actor tears. <laughs> As every good director does. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And also with us tonight, he is the voice of Roadhog from Overwatch, the one and only Josh Petersdorf. Yeah. And also several Netflix dubs. Thank you. I'm I'm the Russian dub master currently. And then <laughs> is there a that Russian film are. that needs a low voice? I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> he is available and Danica can direct it. But uh we are so excited. We feel like this is the perfect guest for our 100th episode because without this person, we I mean this is either like his 10th or 11th visit. We were trying to calculate it in advance, but uh, we are so honored to have him. He is the one and only Matt Novetsky. Hi, guys. Hello. What's up, Matt? I, I think this might be 11. Is this 11? Right? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You Something have the like right that? to say you're a co-host of the show now. Yeah, I think hey, like you're an official yeah. co-host on the Talk <laughs> Culture program. Oh, yeah. I like I like that, and I'm I'm only going to refer to you as Russian Dubmaster, by the way. Please, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best name ever. <laughs> yeah, I think we have to. Uh, let me see. The can dub, I? Yeah. I'm trying to see if I can. Um, Wait, edit your name on here. But uh, I, I know, unfortunately, Alski couldn't join us tonight. I know he sends his warmest regards, and we will have him here for the next one. But, Matt, we are so excited. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, Alan. Poor Alski. He's sick. I think there's some. I think there's stuff going around. He's not, yeah. he's, not, he's not good. And I know that he, like, knowing Alan as well as I do, which I feel like I know him better than anybody, but it's knowing him as well as I do, for him to not be here, he's not, he's got to be in bad shape for sure. So just sending send him our love. We send in love. Scoop and hugs. Chicken yeah, scoop and for hugs. sure. Go. And positive healing vibes. And like I said, he'll be here for the next one because there will be many more of these with Icarus right. Bell and Blue October. I'm <laughs> certain of it. I mean, this, w- look, Matt, I remember like it, it was a little over a year ago, we all came to you and said, can we use your songs for our intro? And we had one of your songs for Rock Around the Ring, which was the uh, previous incarnation of the show. And now, I mean, I, I feel so honored that we get to listen to an Icarus Bell song every time the show goes live. So thank you so much again. This is just, no, you, you guys are you. so cool. That's, that's the ultimate honor, honestly. It really is. So I'm just, I, I'm just, yeah. I'm, I, it, it's so like, The fact that anybody would actually want to listen to it in the first place is super cool. But then like you actually want to use it, you know, over and over and over again. It just means the world. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Killer track, man. Killer track. Yeah, thank you. It really, it really is. Well, I guess to, to kind of get things started, uh, Blue October recently finished the "This Is What I Live For" tour, and I feel so honored that I got to go see you guys in Tampa. It was amazing it was exactly what i needed and uh would you say um or can you remember a particular maybe moment from the tour over the past couple months that maybe stood out to you more above the rest you know it was i mean i feel like that whole tour in particular first of all it was long and it was a long (laughs) tour it was a good three months we're in in for a lot of bands like when i you know like Musicians I know are like, how long is your tour? I'm like, three months. They're like, oh, yeah, that's pretty standard. And I'm like, not for us. Like, that's long for us because we all have kids and, you know, we're all a little older. Um, so we try to break it up and do maybe like six weeks tops and then go home for a couple weeks or a month or whatever it is. And so doing three months pretty much almost nonstop is a lot for us. So, like, that was intense because it was so many dates, but it was after the last couple of years being able to do it again we we're all so grateful and everyone was just so like freaking happy that it was actually happening that i think that like 
that whole aspect of it just brought a whole new vibe to the tour for sure. And not like everybody's just a-holes all the time outside of that, you know, but like we definitely were less of a-holes to each other on this tour <laughs> because it was like, man, I actually missed you. You know, like I actually really miss doing this. I miss being with you guys and being with my, like with my band family and my crew. And um, so, I mean the whole, like the whole tour, I, again, I'm not, this isn't me like being a politician. Like I'm, I mean it, it was awesome. It was so positive and it was so just badass for us to all be back together again and nobody took it for granted um but like one of my I, I i don't know why but one of my favorite um moments from the tour was probably there's a couple things one we went to my hometown in traverse city which i loved and i loved like having a couple days off there we actually took the pontoon boat out and of course justin and i were both on the boat when this happens but we ran out of gas and our brand new tour manager had to get in a kayak and bring us gas. And okay, so he's right. like, and it starts raining and he's like, you know, out there kayaking across the lake. Like he's like, what did I get myself into? These guys are clowns, you know? Um, so that, that was band. cool. Yeah. I was like, oh, this poor guy, you know? Um, but he, he's amazing. Uh, and, and of course he saved the day, which is great. But like, that was really cool. It was really nice. Like I love fall in Traverse city because the leaves are changing and it's, it's very pretty, you know, but, um, the, 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 the other thing was we, we played a couple shows that normally there would be bigger crowds, but because of COVID and because of everything else, it was smaller, more intimate. And a couple of those shows were just like, I just feel like we were just on fire, you know? So, um, San Francisco was one of those. It was just like, it was a small crowd. It's a pretty small crowd for us. And we played this, this really cool venue called the great American music hall. And it was like, people are just like right up in your face there. And I just like, I don't know, just something about that show that night. I was like, man, we're like, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, we're a good band, you know? You um, are. Imagine yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So any new song? What was your favorite new song? Like new stuff to play these on tour these Ooh. past three months. What was the the new the new hit that was going off really well for you guys? Man, well, I strictly subjective, I, of course, but what would you say yeah. was something that you enjoyed playing? <laughs> Well, for me, it's always, you know, being a bass player, I'm always like, what's like the coolest bass line? You know, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, everybody else is here to hear the lyrics. Ah, just, what's the bass doing? So I'm like, um, so I, I would have to say that um, I honestly love the whole new record. I really do. Like, it's one of the full, it's one of the few albums that I'm like, man, there's not a song on here that I don't, or that I'm like, eh, about, you know, that I'm indifferent about or whatever. Like, I really like them all. But, um, uh, we opened with daylight, which I think is such a cool opening song because it has such a cool energy to it. But like the way I used to love you is probably the song that I think like I felt the best about. And we were following up daylight with that. So it was like daylight, like kind of went right into it and it's such a vibey song. And then again, like it's just this super gnarly, like chunky fuzzed out, you know, dirty bass line. And I get mm -hmm. to just kick right in with it, with the drums. And um, I love playing that song every night, man. I did. I feel that's yeah. awesome. That was a really great question, Russian Dubmaster. Very yes, <laughs> Russian Dubmaster. <laughs> one of the finest in Russia. Questions come to me, and I only respond. Okay. <laughs> That's <pretty> good. <laughs> well, we also wanted to ask, um, what made y'all do a cover of Cornflake Girl? Um, mm, and ah. if there are any other potential covers? Question mark. Uh, so corn. So okay. So um. I, to me, like, if you're going to do a cover song and you're going to record a cover song and you're going to put it out there, you got to do your own thing with it, right? You got to put a spit, like, it can't just be like, oh, yeah, that's, um, you know, that's so-and-so's version of an Eagle song. Like, you know, it's it needs to be, like, you have to do something super original to it and you have to really make it your own. And so I love Tori Amos. I, like, I, you know, I I grew up on, on, that's, like, I feel like was part of my playlist, like, in college, you know, and, and, um, so to me, like that song takes me back to a place. It's very nostalgic to me, but I like one thing I felt, I feel like it's like, I've always listened to that song and I'm like, man, I would love to hear just like a sludgy version of this. Right. And there's actually a band that I'm a big fan of called Jawbox that has also done a version of it. And I love their version, but their version is almost kind of punk rock. I just want to hear like a sludgy you know, just super gnarly version with just kind of going off with piano. Um, and so when, when uh, Alan and I first talked about it, it was like, man, if like, it'd be cool to do a cover and just, and not 
really worry about um, putting it on the album or anything necessarily, but just, just put it out, right? Just give it away, just make it accessible to whoever, but do something a little bit obscure and something that's not, you know, isn't loaded down with guitars and bass you know it's more like something that's based around something else and so that being a piano song it was exciting for us to do our own take on it and i and but alan's a hard sell with covers and i'm not just saying that because he's not here he, he really <laughs> is a hard sell like so when i say hey we should do a cover like the first thing he kind of is like uh, i don't know man i don't really want to do a cover but then when we started diving into that song in particular he really warmed up to it and was like okay yeah we could do something super cool with this and I love the way it turned out. I like the fact too that like we got a bunch of people on that song, you know. <laughs> so some of the songs have like one or two cameos on it, but that song is like everybody we know is on that song. So that was fun, you know. Yeah. But it, including it, Matt Riley. Matt Riley. Oh yeah. yeah. Another another Maddie. guest. Who's <laughs> how many how many times has he been on now? Okay, so five. He, he's a five timer, <laughs> but he also co-hosted an episode with me. So technically <laughs> six. Six. <laughs> Man, I love that guy. Yeah, that is yeah. awesome. Um, <laughs> it's a Matt thing. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, it, but as far as far as uh, as far as doing like any more cover songs, it would have to be something definitely out of left field. You know, okay. it, it would have to be. But I, I don't. I don't know. It was fun, but at the same time, like I'm really excited about finishing up original material, and that's where my head's at right now. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, the the follow up question is: Do you think cornflakes and raisins belong in a cereal together? <laughs> what an interesting. It, now, what about if that's an interesting topic? Because isn't that just raisin bran? But I mean, yeah. what's like? Isn't the difference corn and bran flakes? Oh, that's actually so what would very, we... I thought the same thing, Russian dub master. Um, <laughs> this is. This is definitely something that has crossed my mind. What's really funny too is like it's so funny that you bring that up. When you go back and actually like read about the history of the song, and when Tori Amos explained, like I read a couple interviews she did when it first came out, and it's almost like she's talking about two different songs in these interviews, you know. But yeah. but um, I, I just remember like hearing it back then and thinking it was something completely different, and then she explains it, and it's like, oh. That's what it is. That's kind of, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, but the, I would say, yes, they do belong together. Absolutely belong together. Okay. Why not? We all need to get along, man. It's like yeah. bananas and Cheerios. It's a natural fit. Like, yeah. no? Why are you what? looking at me crazy woman who never had a pop tart until 2021? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trigger. No pop tarts. Okay. Oh, I, I had my first pop tart in my pocket on this show. She's a maniac. All wow. right. <laughs> Tell them the flavor you had of Pop Tarts too. Oh, it was Funfetti. Funfetti. Oh, oh man, well, that doesn't you're, surprise me. You're just going all the way in. Yeah, yeah. you're just <laughs> jumping in the deep end right there. You're gonna go, go right? That's yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, we had a consensus that like frosted strawberry is like the, the go-to. Oh, yeah. That's. Would you agree? Okay. I agree. I feel like that's like blueberry or strawberry, right? It's like you gotta oh, yeah, go classic first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lots of money. You ate it cold too. Stuff, you yeah. ate it cold, like it was like a good fourth grader just got it in their lunch. You no, know what I mean? Like you were, yeah. He heated it up for me. He oh, heated, did he heated it up. up? Okay. Yes, okay. he did. Oh, oh he's not a monster. Poster and everything. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Fun Fetty might freak you out a little bit, though. That's just kind of intense. Mm -hmm. It was. It was enjoyable. <laughs> sure. But now I have to try bananas uh, uh, in cereal. Go ahead, Josh. Other than your uh, next cover of Island Boy, uh, oh, you guys are working on right now. <laughs> um, but in real, realistically, do you have any more collabs for Icarus Bell songs coming up? Because we were talking about a ton of collaborations. Anything in the mix right now with other artists? So we have, yeah, well, um, yes. Like specific exact plans, those are still being worked out. But we have, like, we have friends that we, Every once in a while, we'll kind of check in with, and it's like, hey, we still want to do this. When we get to this song, are you still down? And the answer is always yes, which is great. Um, but like one guy that from the very early days um, that we had talked to about getting on a song is um, Jeff Rydell. And Jeff is the drummer for Perfect Circle, and he plays oh, for... Um, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm never saying it right, but Pussifer, is that it, right? I think that's right, yeah. Pussifer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then he, and, and I know he was with Devo for a while, and he does, like, he and Josh Freeze do a lot of the same gigs, but Jeff's awesome, and um, he really liked the songs a lot, and so he's going to jump on something for sure. We just don't know which one yet. 
Um, Hell yeah. And I'm a massive Perfect Circle fan. So for me, like, that's like. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of went. Ah. You know, yeah. yeah. But Danica's fangirling <laughs> out over here. <laughs> oh, nice. That's awesome. So he'll, he'll definitely um, be on a song coming up for sure. Uh, we just got to okay. nail down which one. And then we've actually got a friend. There was a band called Flicker Stick. Um, I don't know if you guys remember Flicker Stick or not. Awesome band. And they are making a comeback. And the singer Brandon is actually working on a song right now, which is super cool. And then we've got like the, you know, the list of usual suspects, people that we work with all the time. Um, and we kind of we kind of have like a little bit of an extended family going on right now, too, as far as writing and production and adding flavors. And and so we've got we got like a little crew of people that we work with quite a bit, which is awesome. And an Icarus Bell bubble, if you will. It is kind of an Icarus Bell bubble sandwich. <laughs> Oreo. Raisin bran. Cookie. Ben Darius, Banana. Darius. Icarus. <laughs> Icarus no. bubbles. All right. Um, well, somebody actually mentioned, so I wanted to bring this up, um, the artwork. So because, you know, the, the individual art for every, you know, song release that comes out, um, we're just curious, was the art direction on those like a collaborative effort with the artist or did they just kind of have free reign? That's a great question too. So, um, it, it, I would say it's a collaboration, but it's also not like, I, I don't feel like we should take, Alan and I should take too much credit for that because Brad, Brad Bond, who, who does our, our art for us, is so good at what he does that like, you just want to give him a general concept. Like we, basically what we do is say, hey, here's the song. Here's kind of the idea. Do your thing with it. And then a couple of these actually, yeah, look at this. I mean, a wow. couple of these. He just ran with it. It was like, here's the song. Do what you want, you know, do what you want to do. Um, Cornflake Girl was one that like um was definitely because it was a cover, I think we wanted to be a little more specific with it, you know. So we had an idea and just said, Hey Brad, can you do this? And then like his first try, I was like, Yep, it's perfect. Um, but honestly, like the rest of this is really Brad interpreting the songs, you know, and he's kind of made this whole theme out of it too, which I love. I love how vibrant it is. Yeah. They are gorgeous. Yeah. Shout out to Brad, yeah. killing it. Brad Bond. Shout out He's Brad. Man. Brad yeah. Bond. Awesome. The middle well, one's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we also wanted to ask, so we were really sorry to see that y'all had to cancel the show that was upcoming in January, yes. um, but we're just curious if there are any upcoming plans for maybe future shows? For sure, absolutely. Yeah, we, we hated having to cancel that. It just wound, it was a complete logistical nightmare for us because it's really far. Um, we had a couple other things that we were trying to build around it that didn't happen, and so it just, it turned into something where it was like, there's no way we're going to be able to pull this off the way that we want to. So, um, um, so unfortunately we had to bail on it, but, and on top of that, we're really good friends with stereo ranger, which is Tim, Tim Bassett's band, Tim and Ronnie. And more than anything, I just want to go hang out with those guys. <laughs> you know, I was like, man, I just want to hang out with you. I don't, I want to come up there, but, um, so we hated doing that, but it, it, it definitely was the right call. But at the same time, we are going to do shows with them in the future. We talked about it. Look, this doesn't, mean we're not going to do something down the road. But we're actually talking about late spring putting together a proper run of shows. It's a lot, it, just like anything, you know, it's a lot easier to put a lot of time and preparation into something if you're going to do a few shows or a couple weeks. One show at 30 minutes is really difficult to put a ton of energy into, you know? So it's really like we need to pad it with some other shows. So what we're talking about doing and, um, I don't know exact dates yet. I don't know venues or cities yet, but I know that we're talking about Texas and possibly a little bit up into the Midwest doing a couple weeks in the Heck spring. Yeah. Late oh, that's spring. exciting. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, Florida and North Carolina, California, if you all happen to make your way there too, we'd love to come see you. Right? Or shows. <laughs> California having shows. You're out of your mind. <laughs> now, now, Florida, on the other hand, like, you know, it's funny because everybody would ask me about this, about this last tour, like, well, how was it? How was it? You know, um, you know, cause a lot of people I know are still like, they're still like living inside of their bedrooms. You know, they're like, I haven't seen this on in two years, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, they're like, well, what was it like? And I'm like, well, Florida was happening. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it shouldn't be, but it it's like it was like sardines. It's like everybody. It's like nothing ever happened in Florida. Wow. Well, my, my favorite part of the show, or I mean, like, <laughs> so I, I guess it was like during the encore. 
when it started torrentially downpouring, yeah. it was as if like God was like, we got to settle down guys. Like, so <laughs> yeah. it just started, with, like, I mean, it was a cool experience. Like yeah. it was like kind of like beautiful in a, in like a, in a very drenched wet way, but it yeah. was still like really cool to like have experienced a concert while sopping wet. So that you, was... to you totally just reminded me of another one of my favorite moments from the tour, which is Go that ahead. moment when it started yeah. raining during oh. that show. It was like, it was crazy. and I think it was during Into the Ocean, actually. I think um, it was. Was it Into the Ocean? It like I think started, it... was it? I, I think like it was. It was. The... I, it, it very well could be. I was wet. My brain started like glitching out. I don't know. So. <laughs> yeah. Or no, it was the encore. That's right. Yeah, it, it was, was the during encore, the encore. I, I just yeah. remember though that moment where it was like, I mean, the crowd was amazing, you know, and everybody was just like, it was just so hyped up. It was so much fun. But then like when that happened and it started coming down, it was just like, it wasn't like, oh crap, it's raining. This sucks. It was like, oh, this is awesome. It's yeah. raining. This it's a hundred degrees and it's raining and now yeah. we, like, that's yeah. more rain it's something else sometimes when it rains and it's that hot it's not even rain like oh the the air is just liquefying <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yep absolutely wild, but still a really cool i'm glad i got to experience it um oh so another thing we wanted to ask you matt uh if you could tell us more about this but uh we saw that one of your music videos and i believe it was for vultures won an addy award uh is this something you can tell us about so, yeah, so basically, there, and I, I, I'm not hip to like all of the awards and, you know, what they're all for exactly, but I sure. know that um, they're for lyric videos, they do, now they do awards for lyric videos and they do, you know, for specific things like that and specific genres. And we found out that the, um, I believe the lyric video won an award and I think it was up against like a bunch of other things too. So it was like, oh. That's cool. Yeah, right. it's a great we'll video. It. I mean, yeah, never, we'll never played it. a show, but we're winning awards. Ah, <laughs> yeah, nice. powerful, powerful. <laughs> uh, pivoting real quick, um, what can you tell us about working with the Premier Career Guidance as head of their Austin division, my friend? PCG. Yeah. PCG. So, so one of the things that, um, and this is something that, like, I definitely. Uh, have plans for as far as like expanding this and this becoming something um i guess a little bit more uh central to me personally but definitely something that like we're going to really start tapping into austin specifically and central texas for that matter um but so artist development is like that's a term that everybody's heard right that's something that everybody knows but a lot of people don't really know what it means they don't really know the mechanics of it they don't really know the insights you know of like what what is artist development what does it mean mentoring and artist development are something that for to me personally has been super important for a long time i love like helping people i love helping younger kids like younger talented kids that really like that have something to say and are either a really good songwriter or, you know, they want to be a singer or a musician or whatever that is. And they want it to happen in the music industry, but they don't know exactly how to do it because to most of us, it just seems like a pipe dream. You know, it's like, Oh yeah. Like you just wake up and you're a rock star one day or whatever. It's like, you know um, so it's, I, I feel like there are a lot of unknowns and there are a lot of um, question marks and there are a lot of families that have really talented kids but they don't, they're just like, all I know is my kid like has great pitch and has all this personality and won't shut up, won't stop singing. I don't know what to do with it, you know? So to me, um, PCG is a really cool company because they're based in Nashville, but Bernard, the founder, and I became friends a few years ago. And um, what he was doing with PCG and working with younger kids and younger artists was really in line with kind of what I was doing already here with some of the artists that I work with and, and some that I was kind of loosely mentoring and producing. So he brought me into the fold to work with them and start bringing in songwriters and um, like, you know, voice lessons, all the, uh, like every aspect of your music career, like everything started bringing in different people to start working as providers for the company and working with kids, mentoring. And it's turned into this really cool thing. And it's been great because, you know, like, during a pandemic, for example, when you're not touring and you're home for a couple of years, well, it's nice to be able to pour all your energy into something like that, you know? So making records and mentoring and working with kids is like, you know, I'm, I missed being on the road. I miss being with my, with my boys and my family, but at the same time, it was like, it's awesome that I have this though, 
you know, it's really cool that I have this other thing that I'm passionate about that I can, that I can do. So, but like I said, it is something that I think over the next few years, I really want to start, I want to put more emphasis on it. I want to dive into it more and, and create some more infrastructure here in Austin because there's so many talented people here. There's so many good, like just amazing kids here that like have no voice and have no platform, you know? Yeah. Well, very That's cool. Really awesome, man. Yeah. Great yeah. work. Yeah. Great Thank work. you. So I say we get into these questions that we have. What do you guys say? I, I say yes. Okay. <laughs> so Matt, yeah. We had some friends of the show um, okay. ask some questions, and we're going to play them for you. They are video questions for you to answer. Oh, I love it. However love you this. choose to answer. And maybe you know some of them. Maybe you don't. And if you don't, okay. we will help. We, we will explain. So, uh, Jude, if you want to roll the first one, this is from our friend. Hey, this is Clownbus saying congratulations on 100 stellar episodes. Talk culture podcast and if it's all right i do have a question for the guest my question is in the year 2022 how can we best spend our time going to rock concerts <laughs> going to rock concerts. <laughs> absolutely yeah, my god sure. you know go like I mean, all things considered that we're in a good place, right? You know, 20, 2022 has got to be the year, right? Yeah. It's got to be. And you're going out with the Goo Goo Dolls, right? We are. Yeah. And we're doing a, we're doing a bunch of dates with them. I think this has been rescheduled like a million times now, but, it but it's happening. So yeah, we start in July and we'll be out for about, I think three months with them and oh, playing a bunch of bucket list venues too, which is cool. Never played Red Rocks. Red Rocks. Yeah, we're doing oh. Red Rocks, you know, a bunch of like a bunch of really, really awesome venues. So that's super exciting, you know. But I mean, to me, you know, I'm also, I don't know. I, maybe it's because I, I I don't have any hobbies and all I do is music. So I'm a little burnt out and going to live shows. I felt like a couple years ago, it's like somebody be like, "Hey, come see my band play." I'm like, oh, I don't know, I'm tired, <laughs> you know. Now I'm like, hell yeah, where are you? Where are you playing? What time? You know. I feel like everybody should like reconnect with people. Get off, get off social media for one night and go see a show. Go spend time with some friends. You know, mm -hmm. how dare you speak common sense? How dare? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's pull up the next one. Here we go. Question number two. Icarus Bell. Oh, Lucas Ross. Lucas, here. my boys, I love you. I have a question. What is your favorite Lucas Rossi song? Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, my fa my favorite. Uh, first of all, I love Lucas. That guy is like one of my favorite people in the whole world. He's the He's sweetest dude ever. We still need to do. Uh, um, we still need to do our get together with him. But my favorite song. This is a no brainer for me. I actually made a cameo in a video for one of his songs, Summertime. and it was yeah. There you go. That's so. I mean, obviously that's my favorite, right? And Alan's, <laughs> Alan's not here, so I'm gonna say it's his favorite too. All right, next time he's on, we'll uh, we'll circle back. But <laughs> yeah. All right, next question. Here it is. Hello, gentlemen. So my question is this: uh, What's well, two questions? Are, what's the largest crowd you've ever performed to? And secondly, which do you prefer, small, intimate? Performances are big, <laughs> massive ones. Okay, Matt's reacting. Are you, are you okay? effing kidding me right now? I know, right? I'm surprised. You just had too. Arthur Morgan. <laughs> I'm surprised he has an Irish accent. Do <laughs> you know how many hours I've played as Arthur Morgan? <laughs> what? <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> Man. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm kind of blown away. What was the question again? Okay. Um, I, I like both. I like intimate and big, big shows. But honestly, I get like, people are like, do you get nervous before shows? I don't get nervous before shows unless there's a, like a very small crowd. Then it's nerve wracking to me. If there's like 20 people or it's an acoustic show or something, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so nervous right now. Big crowds, I don't get nervous at all. The biggest crowd I think that we ever played for was probably, we played a thing called Festival du Quebec uh, mm -hmm. twice. And once was with Live and once was with Kiss. And I believe the Kiss show was like 
seventy thousand or something like that. It's like yeah. sixty eight thousand people or something. But yeah. and everybody had these little Bud Light pins that have flashing lights on them, and all you could see up the hill were, were those little lights, right? When the sun went down, uh, man, that was I'll never forget that. That was so yeah. cool. Yeah. Heck yeah. Well, I'm glad oh, yeah. you're a Red Dead fan. So <laughs> I, I'm big time. Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> Well, did you ever play Red Dead Online, or did you just stick to story? No, I, I actually like online a lot. I just okay, got cool. into it. Yeah, like not not very long, just a few months ago, you know. But um, the way that game is paced yeah. is it's such a drop in game. You don't need. I've, I really like yeah. Red Dead because you can step away for a couple months and then come back and you're like, oh yeah, I'm right yeah. back with Dutch and <laughs> Arthur and everybody. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, for what? sure, man. It's such. I'm, I mean, I don't know. I there's something about being up like like late night, the only person awake with my headset playing that game like it is so much fun and totally and actually the the first one is one of the is like one of the last of us and the first red dead are the two games that really got me into gaming cool so um i could go on and on and on but what I love what, what are you currently playing i actually have far cry 6 and i just started okay. it um i just started it i couldn't even tell you if it's any good or not yet but okay. so far so good yeah. Josh, I, any I, recommendations too? Uh, currently, I'm playing Shin Megami Tensei V on Nintendo Switch and uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Nice. I have a Switch. Yeah, Shin Megami Tensei yeah. V is like kind of like Persona. Um, okay. It's very strange. You're like I'm. A, you're like I'm in a Japanese kid in high school, and then like, oh no, there was an earthquake. Now I'm in hell and fighting nether demons. You're like, I don't know. Sounds <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love it. Sounds great. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. I didn't mean to cut you off before. No, you're good. No, I'm. At, well, I'm actually playing Dying Light on the Switch right now, and I was blown away at how good it is. Nice. On the Switch. It's crazy. It's so good. So I, I like. Sc I like scary games. Okay. I like scary okay. games. Yeah. How How do you feel about like those virtual reality? Because now I see everyone with those like oh, yeah. Oculus I got things. One. Just you do. Yeah, <laughs> I got one. I got. I actually finding the room for it. You got to have like a. You got to have space. You literally need do. like a big area to. You do, yeah. And everybody <laughs> likes to laugh at you when you're doing it, which is cool. But um, that's why I won't. <laughs> I, I got. I got it. I'm just such a horror fan. Like Matt Riley and I talked about this actually when we did um when we were guests one night one night. But um, we're both huge horror fans. I'm a big horror fan. Everything, movies, games, everything. But I love, love, love horror games. I love being freaked out by myself and playing games and there's nothing like playing uh walking dead saints and sinners on vr oh wow was good. yeah that was so crazy. good you are such a strong person i know i'm not i'm a baby oh i like i would like take it off and like look <laughs> around and i'm like the okay, jump scares do it for I'm me safe. i'm like i'm gonna have a i'm gonna have a freaking uh, heart attack playing these games like you know what i mean like the jump scares yeah. always do it for me i'm just so freaky man so good <laughs> More for y'all. Okay. Yes. Here, here's the next question. Icarus Bell. <laughs> question number two. How much wood? Can a woodchuck chuck? If a woodchuck could chuck wood. Uh. Like I oh, thought it was by candlelight. I was like it was by it was by Bic light. <laughs> I I need to I need to hang out with him. Uh I feel like I'm missing him in my life right now. Um six. Oh. <laughs> I'm just gonna go with six. Woodchuck six. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's know. the correct answer. Yeah, we actually had uh we had Lucas on last week with his buddy uh Maddie Shreds to promote his new album that released last week. It's called Autonomic and it's pretty epic. So nice. Uh, that's yeah. awesome. Heck yeah. All Very right. Cool. Next question. What would you like to ask Icarus Bell? <laughs> I want to know what is Icarus Bell's favorite medieval fantasy show, book, or movie. And and what do you think about garden gnomes? <laughs> what do you think about garden gnomes? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, can I say Lord of the Rings? I mean, I, yeah. I like yeah. okay, so yeah, I I mean, they're my, my favorite books growing up, right? And and when the movies, when I found out that Peter Jackson was doing Lord of the Rings, I I was in heaven. I was like, this is going to be amazing. I made my brother and my dad go with me to see. Uh, the first one and they both were like this is gonna i have no idea why i'm going to see this why are we doing this and they both loved it 
and went and like, saw the next two and then saw the Hobbit and totally fell in love with them. Um, grew up on them. Still a huge nerd when it comes to Lord of the Rings to this day. Um, and then as far as garden gnomes go, well, I mean, come on, Will knows the answer to this, but, um, I feel good about garden gnomes. I feel damn good about garden gnomes. <laughs> My daughter used to watch this mo this movie called Gnomeo and Juliet. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, classic tale of love. Yes, <laughs> it's a classic tale. And I could tell you every word of that movie. I've seen it a few times. It, it, I, I know the soundtrack has some pretty epic Gnomeo, people in it Gnomeo. too. Elton John, man. Elton, Elton John's John? all over that thing. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think we have a couple more. Maybe one more. I don't know. Speaking They're, of gnomes. What? Oh, is your daughter? <laughs> my little gnome came in right now. She heard you summoning. Hey, <laughs> oh, Nomi and Juliet. Hi, oh, sweetheart. Hi, Sunny. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> all right. On to the next one. Yep, Sunny. We agree. I I have a question. If Kid Cadet had a kid with Icarus Bell, would you call it Kid Icarus? Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> you are blowing my mind. <laughs> Arthur Morgan. Pete, Pete. Pete. I mean, what is happening? The dancing here? lady. Yeah. The dance. yeah. What? Petunia. Yeah. Petunia. <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, yeah, I, I I can't believe I've never even thought of that before, Kid Icarus. I mean, that's Kid like Icarus. that's a no brainer, right? Crossover event. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? The answer is yeah. yes, right? Yes. The be. answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. The answer is yes. All right. Well, Pete and Pete. Pete and Pete. Home Pete Alone. Pete. I mean, like, yeah. I that's can't. right. I did watch Home Alone, and he's Kevin's older brother in that. I forgot. That's my, yes. My youngest is really into Home Alone right now. Big time. <laughs> he made me watch, watch it the other day. Actually, have you watched Home Sweet Home Alone? I have not. I saw. I saw it was. It was in queue. I didn't go there though. I did not watch it. But Sacrilege. But my, Stick with the my first. My son. Two. My son gave me a whole like play by play with the whole movie. He was narrating the whole thing. It was pretty funny. Actually. That should suffice. He's like, yeah. oh, this is Kevin. Okay, you're gonna want to watch this, Dad. That's Kevin. He's like, okay. I've Got seen it. this before, but that's cool. <laughs> when we when we had Michael on, because he was like one of our first guests on the show, mm -hmm. we had this like huge debate about milk and pizza. Oh, that's right. <laughs> like, is that what do you what are your thoughts, Matt? I, I actually have pizza? a friend back in so I, I grew up in Traverse City, Michigan, right? And one of my friends from back in Traverse City, uh, I I remember it was after school one day, he's like, Hey, let's order a pizza. And he ordered pizza and he poured a big glass of milk. And it's like whole milk or something. And he was eating pizza and drinking milk. And I had to, I was like, I'm not hungry. I'm done. <laughs> That's so gross. That is it's, so gross to me. Yeah. I'm say taste bud wise, taste bud wise, I could, I could, I could go for it. But I'm like, my stomach could not handle all that cheese That's and dairy. all that milk. No, overload, bro. man. The grease no. with the That's milk. I just, yeah. well, That's not good for me. No. No. Yeah. God, no. what an adult conversation we're having. I'm such an right old Bruce. I'm such an old man. Like sour cream makes me vomit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I went to the grocery store for the first time. I'm old, and I bought milk, thinking, "Oh, this is just milk." And I went home. It was lactate-free milk because I didn't know because it was yeah. like it was very small print. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I need. I need lactose, lactose Fairview. Fruit. Yeah, I don't like Look, milk. I'm stick with the oat it. milk. You don't like milk. milk? I, I like oat milk. I like oat almond milk. milk. Yeah. yeah, milk just does it doesn't do good things to me. That's all I'll say. Mm -hmm. You'll have Fair to ask enough. Justin. Ask Justin about it next time you see. <laughs> we'll do that. That'll be our yeah. first question if we ever get yeah. Justin on here. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that was the end of our questions, and uh, those were really fun. Uh, so now, of course, we have the Would You Rather's, and we figured since is since this is the one hundredth episode, all of these have to do with. 100 something or something or something so you'll get okay. it once we get there so uh josh what do you ah. think you want to uh you want to start us off with the first do, 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 would do, you do, rather do, 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 do. my friend would you <laughs> rather eat 100 spoonfuls of you guessed it sour cream speaking of sour cream the pain of my existence or eat a, a hundred spoonfuls who eats like i know people who eat spoonfuls of sour cream but i've never known anyone to eat a spoonful of mustard i love <laughs> mustard i'll do it i love okay. mustard and I, I can answer this for alan too because okay. alan does not like anything uh creamy that's white 
He doesn't like mayo. He doesn't like um, marshmallow fluff. He doesn't like fluff. He doesn't like sour cream. He, yeah, he's not into. He's very. He's 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 a weird dude, right? He's weird. <laughs> um, well, he's not here, yeah. so we can say yeah. that. <laughs> um, but I love mustard. I could just. I mean, I could just take mustard, just mustard. pour it right down my mouth. It's so good. Yeah. Um, Do you have any gray poupon? That's mustard, right? I'm not a. Yes. It, well, it's like a very fancy Dijon mustard. Yeah, but okay. I'm just talking like French's yellow mustard. Just give me that. Oh, just yeah. straight up yellow mustard. Okay, all yeah. you. I think I they'll have to make my uh, Senfa Aina, which is a very, very German dish that is made with basically you make a roux out of mustard. <laughs> and then, oh no, I swear to God. And, and then you poach eggs in it. Oh, that's, yeah. That's some German Let's do shit. this. Oh, the yeah. most German thing, and it's so oh. good. <laughs> yeah. What is it called, though? What is it called? Senfa again? Aina. Senfa Aina? Gesundheit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yes. My husband thinks it's delicious. He's a huge mustard guy. Okay. I'm in. What about I'm mustard in. and corn dogs? That's like my that's what they naturally go with for me and oh, ham. Alex. I like ham and mustard and with the ham. No. I make a really good mustard <laughs> sauce for ham for Christmas. One that's thing I actually I'm talking about. I, I actually more. um I used to do a lot was when I was up late at night gaming, playing Red Dead Redemption, I would get a bag of pretzels and a big bowl of mustard. And just dip the pretzels. Yeah, pretzels in there. for sure and mustard for sure. My son's oh, yeah. into that. He's into yeah. that too. Okay, cool. My and then I had to explain like all the yellow stains all over everything. <laughs> I don't my think has this like go-to snack of tortillas and mustard. Yeah, I could I'm try not gonna that. judge. I'm not gonna judge. I've never had it. I've never had it. Maybe it's delicious. It's like pistachios and bananas. You ever had that? No. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. good. But uh, yeah. I I don't think I've ever had mustard. That is definitely a lie. What? You think I had a hot dog? I don't put mustard. I've never had mustard. Ask dude if he's ever seen me eat mustard. I don't go near it. I don't like Try it. Try it on something though. Yeah. A put it on tart. something. Don't just a don't just take tart. a spoonful of it. Not a pop tart. Not a fun fetty pop tart. A Absolutely big, not. Fluffy pretzel with salt goes great yeah. with a cheese sauce <laughs> or a mustard. <laughs> 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 Just put a drop on your finger. Awesome. Little... Here we go. You gotta shake it first so you don't get just water. Yeah, yeah, you gotta shake it oh. so you don't want to. Yeah, it's like ketchup. Yeah. Yeah. I can shake it, shake it. Yeah. All right, one hundred. Ew, Thank it's you, like Danica. ew. Okay. See the water. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. I can't get any. Not too much now. Just a dollar. Just to like a, we're talking like a like a the top of attack. Tangy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> It's the white it. people's wasabi. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> Episode 100, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it here and I'm covered in it and squirted out all over me. <laughs> uh, I hate it. I hate it. What, what brand was that? Just so we know. Was that the. Uh... I think it was French's. No, was it's it? just yellow mustard from Target. Ew. Oh, oh it's that's generic why. mustard. Yeah. Too. Dude, yeah, you I need do... a napkin. <laughs> Can't do target right. mustard. Okay, well, let's go to the next one. Danica. Ew, ew, ew. Okay. That's... Oh my God. Would you rather, oh Jesus, listen to Tub Thumper 100 times over the course of 2022 or listen to Gangnam Style 100 times over the course of 2022? Oh my God. I've heard both of these songs a million times already. <laughs> so I, I, I used to bartend, speaking of Traverse City, I bartended at this bar called the UNI Lounge. And I had a guy that would work there that liked to play DJ and he would play that song all the freaking time, constantly. So Gangnam Style, eh, I'm probably going to have to go with Gangnam Style. I just haven't heard it as much as Tub Thumper. I don't, I, I can't, yeah, I can't do it. You okay. drink some whiskey drink? You drink some lager uh, yeah. drink? I, I get it, I get it. Yeah. 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 Oh my god. It smells so much like mustard in here. This is my demise. Like I wish I could even tell you how much it is permeating this room. <laughs> mustard man, mustard man. Rachel is the mustard man. I hate it. Oh my god. All right, go to the next one. Okay. Would you okay, I'll take it for you. I got it. I got it. Okay. Would you rather own a collection of a hundred guitars and drums or own a hundred pieces of original Beatles lyric sheets. Oh man. So it doesn't say bass. It just says guitar mm. or drums. Now if it was basses, yeah, I'd be into that, but I don't need mm. drums and guitars. Um, I like the Beatles lyric sheets, honestly. Beatles I think I would sheet. go with that. 
D- did you watch any of the documentary? I haven't yet. No, I have not. And I've heard nothing but amazing things. I've heard it's just incredible. Um, I just haven't had a chance yet, but I plan to soon for sure. Some of the technology they used is super state of the art to clean up all that old that mm-hmm. old film and everything, the colors people where I saw an interview with Peter Jackson when he was like, people are asking me, how'd you get the colors to be so vivid? He's like, they were already there. We just kind of had to bring it out of the uh, the film. So super wow. cool. How do yeah. I clean up this mustard? <laughs> Cause it was a super high tech. No, it's no, milk. Just, uh, or milk. Yeah. <laughs> and the stains will never go away. Uh, all mustard the stains are, are bad. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. All right. Danica, mustard. go ahead. All right. <laughs> Would you rather, ah, uh, yes, run a hundred meter down <laughs> like or swim a hundred laps in toe shoes? We had the Shout to out to Yep. Oh man, I'm gonna go with swim. Um, yeah. Because you can at least hide the toe shoes underwater, right? <laughs> it's harder for people to see that you're actually in the toe shoes when you're swimming. Someone was saying you have to build like a tolerance to the shoes too. Like you have to wear them for a while so that your feet get used to, cause it's like basically your feet think that you're going barefoot and running barefoot is actually terrible for your feet uh, in terms yeah. of like osteoporosis. Or, Just know, long enough to lose all your friends. <laughs> Nobody much, wants to hang right? out with you. Yep. What about toes now? Toe socks though, not shoes. Toe socks. I, th- I actually, I had some toe socks. I think I wore yeah. them once. Oh, didn't okay. we? All? Oh yeah. <laughs> I think it was weird. Yeah, I think it was weird. And I just moved on. (laughs) Right. I'm pretty sure. Well, we're moving on to the next one. Now I kind of want to do it again, though. I do. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. I'm (gasps) okay. Icarus Bell Toe Socks merch. Ooh. That's actually. Comes with a free packet of mustard. (laughs) (laughs) Well, lost me there. That's great. Love it. Icarus smell mustard. Oh my god, we're just gonna brand so many things. All right, here's the next one. Would you rather? <clears throat> oh, travel with a hundred jackets on tour, or travel with a hundred designer hats on tour? Oh my god, you're asking the right person. Yeah, uh, I have a lot of jackets and I have a lot of hats. I'm gonna go with jackets though. I mean, I, I love hats. I'm not much. I'm not a big like designer hat person though. Like, I have like one. No, I have a couple nice, uh, like Goran Brothers hats that I like, but for the most part, I just kind of just wear these until I get tired of them, and then I just switch to another one. Now, jackets, though, I'm a sucker for a great jacket, and I yeah, love I leather love jackets. jackets. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm gonna go with jackets. <laughs> That's tough, though. That's a tough one. Yeah, I feel like maybe slightly easier to travel with jackets. I don't know. It's a tough. It's a tough one. Yeah, hats are they get they get crushed. They get messed yeah. up. Yeah. You need like yeah. a hat rack and all sorts yeah. of stuff for hats. And if you travel in a suitcase, you got to get like the hat, the, the thing. grate, yeah. you know, the thing, yeah. right? That yeah. protects the, the hats. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. All right, Russian dub master. Next one's on you. <laughs> Would you rather uh, write song with 100 line or write song with less than 100 work? <laughs> oh, man. Uh I'm going to go with the second option. Um, writing a song with 100 lines, that sounds terrible. So, yeah. That just sounds like opera. such a pain in the ass to me. I don't know if I don't know if I could do that. Yeah. I'm going to go I'm going to go with the second the second option. I think it would actually be really fun to try to write a song that's meaningful with very like very short. You know what I mean? Like not a lot of lyrics. I think that would actually be a challenge and it would be pretty cool. Well, we issue that challenge. I'll work on it. All right. I'll be about much. A hundred might be tough, but I'll I'll see what I can do. All right. All right. Excellent, Miss Danica's. All right. Oh, would you rather spend a day babysitting a hundred puppies or spend a day babysitting a hundred kittens? I so many people are gonna give me a hard time about this, but I'm gonna go with kittens and I, I I'm gonna go with kittens because puppies are really cute, but they just they're really high maintenance and i feel like they're just gonna crap everywhere right (laughs) it's like kittens are uh they're equally as cute i mean in my opinion they're equally as cute and they're just way less work that is true that is categorically correct (laughs) yeah josh is that you i don't know (laughs) there must be a frog in my throat (laughs) a frog (laughs) All right, we got two more. That's great. All right, so would you rather travel 100 years into the past or travel 100 years into the future? Ooh. In the year. Three these are, yeah, these are the best questions ever. 
I'm actually going to say into the past. I would like because you know with what the knowledge you have, right? Yeah, with the knowledge you have, like I I love uh, um, Back to the Future too, like where he he takes the the sports almanac, you know, and he's like, I want to all the copies. I, like, I want to yeah. do that. Um, I, I plus I feel like you know what to expect, you know, and it's like I don't know, going to the future would be cool, but it'd also just be like, what is all this? This is frightening. What the hell mm-hmm. is that? You know. Going into the past, like I feel like you at least like you you have something to gauge, like you know you know kind of what to expect, and I think it'd be awesome. Just, just keep in mind that a uh, hundred years from now would put you back in the Spanish flu. <laughs> oh well, well <laughs> then maybe I'm going to change my answer. So <laughs> way to go, Danica. <laughs> World yeah. War One, the usual. <laughs> yeah, but good music. Good music. Yeah. The coolest yeah, thing yeah, was yeah. if you went 100 years in the past, you just picked up a guitar and you're like, take this out. Yeah. And they're like, what are you doing? Satan yeah. is here. Is, like, the devil is in his hands. He's a like, demon. <laughs> he's I a love demon. It. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> yeah, All right, Josh. Technology in the future, though, man. I don't, that's it. 100 years in the future. That's scary. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Agreed. All right, Josh, you got the last one. Okay. Now, would you rather, my friend? Fight off a hundred zombies, uh, aka Walking Dead, or fight off a hundred possessed dolls, aka Annabelle. Maybe Chucky's in uh, there too. Chucky's considered a possessed doll too. I love both options, honestly. Uh, but I'm gonna go with zombies just because I'm such a massive uh, Walking Dead fan. Possessed dolls, I'm not gonna lie, like that kind of that it's cool, but that creeps the hell out of me. It really does. Possession just... seems more difficult to deal with on a paranormal exterminator level. Like zombie, straight knife to the head, cut it off. Possess is all you're like, yeah, hey, uh, yeah. How do you do it? Shadow people. You know? I don't know what's going on. So. But here, but here, here's a here's a thing. So, are we talking 28 days later zombies? Or are we talking mm. Walking Dead zombies? Because if they're Walking Dead zombies, I'm definitely going with zombies. If they're the fast ones, or are mm. they Shaun of the Dead know. zombies? Oh yeah, yeah. right. It's Walking yeah. Dead. It's Walking Dead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the zombies then. For sure. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready for the apocalypse. I, I believe you. Fly. Well, I feel like let, to segue into our final thing, as I always put Josh on the spot. Josh, yeah. do you want to do like a a trailer for Matt fighting off zombies in the apocalypse? All right. Here we go. Okay. It's a story of death. One man. Touching the sun before his wings melt as Icarus flies. Matt Noveski stars in the zombie killing extravaganza, The Mustard Man. Rated on in theaters Friday this October. Get your hot dogs ready because the mustard's for free in the theaters. Because Matt's bringing the heat with a katana sword for your zombie brain. See you soon. <laughs> Dude, is, mustard, might man. Be my, mustard man. <laughs> the mustard man. Fridays at five on CBS. Oh my god. John Taffer's getting a new bar under Dunn. This place is called the Mustard Hive. You know, I walk up in here and I don't see any mustard. I see all you guys gotta catch up. You gotta catch up your pockets too. So I put a Taffer virtual training system in there. Now we can track and Manage the mustard. <laughs> Dude, your John Taffer is on point. <laughs> that, thank you. Thank you. Really Someone who appreciates good. the Taffer. Oh, thank man. You. Oh, it's so good. Oh, my God. So good. <laughs> it's similar to my Vince Vaughn, but Vince Vaughn, very low, doesn't care. Here, there. <laughs> Taffer. Taffer's $30,000 in the drain. <laughs> ha- hey, real quick. A little. A, can we have like a, a, a dabble of um Michael Caine? Just like a. I say. Well, I had to tell you, let's go outside. But I'd had too many cigarettes, so my breath was bad. So she kicked me out. <laughs> she said, you smell of mustard. You smell like mustard. Wash your teeth. Snape. <laughs> teeth. Snape. Oh, Snape. Uh, there is only one place for your mustard, Potter, and that is between your buns. <laughs> oh man! I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> I've never, oh, I've never heard an Alan Rickman uh, I don't know impression it. before. That's amazing. I, think oh. I have tried. Yeah. I see you gander at her. She will be mine, <laughs> Skinny Todd. She will be mine. Is this... <laughs> I think it was his birthday or something the other day because he was trending on Twitter. Oh. Shout out Alan Rickman. Oh man. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. wow. Celebrating 100 episodes with a bang right here on Fox. <laughs> yeah, we are. Friends Let's with a bang. bang. <laughs> well, we've unfortunately reached the end of episode 100. Oh. This has been such a delight. Jesus. Matt, thank you so much. <laughs> that flew. Well, I thank know. you guys. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Um, Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. Happy all of it. Happy Kwanzaa, Festivus, whatever. Festivus to the rest of us. Krimbus. Krimbus too, yes. yes. Happy Krimbus. Kwanzaa, I think Kwanzaa. today's Kwanzaa recently Kwanzaa, was for sure. Kwanzaa. Um, <clears throat> Chinese New Year's <throat> coming up too. Xin Yin Kwai Lo. Mong Hei Fat Choi Hong Bao Ma Lai. That's uh, we're saying Happy That's New Year to all our friends in Mandarin. Oh my God. Damn. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, before we let you go, Matt, we're going to go over our upcoming guests that we have uh, bringing us into the new year. Uh, we do have a guest on Thursday. We are welcoming Jeff Blue. Uh, he is the senior vice president of a and uh, for Warner Brothers, and he's the current a and consultant for Atlantic Records. He's also helped develop Lincoln Park and Macy Gray and Fred Durst and all that cool stuff. We're very excited. Uh, we're starting off the new year with Felicia Rose from Sleepaway Camp. If you're a horror fan, Matt, I hope you've seen Sleepaway <laughs> Camp. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then we are finally welcoming the bassist from Alice Cooper and Bisto Blanca. We have Chuck Garrett joining us Sick. next month. <sighs> Matt, thank you so much again. And hey, I couldn't, I, yeah, this is. I know thing. Jeff Blue, actually. That's pretty do cool. You? Yeah, I do. T t just, we have, a, yeah, I'll tell you about it later. You have to tell him we have a mutual friend. So you have to okay. tell him that I said hello. That's super done. cool. It's done. Awesome. Sounds good. Yay. Well, Beautiful. uh, Thank you so much again, Matt. And then uh, next time we'll have you back on with Alski uh, in the new year, maybe before you guys uh, go on all the tours. And uh, yeah, Danica, Josh, Matt, this has been so much fun. And, yes, it absolutely uh, has. And yeah. I want to send a special shout out to you, Danica, and you, Heather, for getting the ball rolling on this entire show to begin with. You guys deserve all the credit, all the high fives. You're two amazing people, and I couldn't be more happy to celebrate 100 episodes with you both. So thank you guys. Thank you, oh, God. Man. Thank you guys. Yeah, we're going to cry. And uh, shout out to Jude, of course, for being the best producer in the entire shout world. Out couldn't happen yeah. without him. <sighs> All right, guys. And shout out to the mustard man. <laughs> 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 We changed your name, Matt. You are now the mustard man. I'm good with that. That's actually, yeah, I'm good. Thank you for doing it for me. That's perfect. You got it. Well, all right, guys. Until next time, we are Talk Culture. We'll see you guys real soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.